In this video, let's install Visual Studio 2022 and the front end of SQL Server reporting services. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. SQL Server has got two areas. The first is the back end. So this is SQL Server. So this could be SQL Server Developer, for instance, which is available at no cost. But there's also the front end, the bit that you use. And in this video, we're going to install that front end. Now, if you haven't already installed SQL Server, that's the back end with SSRS, then please have a look at the link at the top of this video for how to download and install for free SQL Server Developer. In order to use SQL Server Analysis Services, Integration Services, or Reporting Services, you need a front end. And the front end that is usually used is Visual Studio. So this is Visual Studio 2022, which is released in November 2021. So the next release probably won't be for two or three years. Now, this is the first release of Visual Studio that has got some more demanding requirements. So you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 with the version 19 or 9 or higher, or Windows Server 22, 2019 and 2016. Additionally, you need a 64-bit version of Windows. So if you've got an older machine, then I'm afraid you won't be able to install Visual Studio 2022. You can find out what you've got by going to Explorer, right and clicking on PC or this PC, and in your PC, it should say somewhere whether you've got 32-bit operating system or 64-bit. If you don't have the minimum requirements, so you've got Windows 7, Windows 8, or you've got a 32-bit operating system, then you can install Visual Studio 2019. Now, additionally, you do need a bit more hardware than previous versions, but it's not too bad. Minimum of four gigabytes, but they recommend up to 16 gigabytes. I would say eight gigabytes is more usual as a minimum, and a 1.8 gigahertz or faster 64-bit processor, but not an ARM processor. However, that's the vast majority of modern computers. So what I'm going to do is go to visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash downloads. Now, the reason I've come to this downloads page as opposed to just going to the first page I came across is if you can't install Visual Studio 2022 and you need to install the earlier version, 2019, then in this downloads page, go to near the bottom and we've got older downloads. If you click that and scroll down again, you can see that we've got the older versions and there is 2019. So you need a free Visual Studio subscription. So if you don't have one, then you can create one. And then when I click on download and potentially have to log in, you can then go to this download page and you can download the Visual Studio Community 2019 edition just click download and most of the functionality will be the same as in the 2022 edition, especially things like the GUI, the graphical user interface that you use to interact with Visual Studio. So if I just go back a few times, I go back to this download page. So that's how you can download the earlier versions. So let's go back up and let's download Visual Studio 2022. Now you can see that there are three different versions. The professional version will cost you around $800 or $40, $45 a month. Enterprise a lot more. However, the community version is completely free. So it says a free download as opposed to just a free trial. So I'm going to click on free download. And in just a few seconds, we'll get notification that it is downloading. Now this is just the bootstrap. This is the minimum bit. So it's not the full version. So I'm just going to now minimize everything except for this. So we need to set up a few things to start your installation. And here it comes. Now Visual Studio has an update every two years or so. So before 2022, there was 2017, then 2015, and I think it was 2012 before that. And the versions, they change a little, but with regards to SQL Server, they aren't huge changes. There are more changes for if you're using languages like, for instance, C Sharp or VB.net. So here we are in what you want to install. 
And the reason this exists is because there's so many different environments you might want to set up, so many languages you might want to be using, like ASP.NET, C Sharp, Visual Basic, F Sharp, and all the rest. Additionally, you can install language packs and individual components as well. You can also say where you want it installing. So there's only one workload that I want installing for the purposes of this video, and that's in other tool sets, and it's data storage and processing, connect, develop, and test data solutions with SQL Server, among others. And you can see it's now installing these optional elements, and the total space required is four gigabytes. So I'm going to now click install, and it's going to be downloading them and installing automatically. Now there's an awful lot of packages that it's going to install. It's going to be in the hundreds, so 264, and you can see it's going to download right now one gigabyte. So it's a bit of a waiting game. So what I'm going to do is continue the recording, but I'm speeding it up and then we'll see what happens. Now Visual Studio has had a major update every two years or so. So we've got Visual Studio 2022 released in 21. We've also had Visual Studio 2019, so that's the last 32-bit version, and then 2017, 2015, and I think it was 2012 before that. And the versions for what we are doing in the SQL Server world, they change a little, but there aren't huge changes, especially at the introductory to intermediate level. Right, so now it's finishing up and you can see that the start after installation is checked. And so now if I minimize this screen, you can see that it is now preparing for the first use. Visual Studio 2022 has now been installed, but we haven't yet installed the SSIS extension. So let's do that right now. So what I'm going to do is click on continue without code to get to the main screen. And then we'll go to extensions, manage extensions. Now you'll see that there are already a fair number of extensions installed, but none of those are for SSIS. Now there's a search up here. And if I go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and type in SSIS, then you will notice that there doesn't appear to be a Microsoft product here. So instead of typing SSIS, you need to type the word integration. And after a few seconds, you can see here, we have the Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services Project. So make sure you don't install something that isn't by Microsoft. It isn't necessarily what you are looking for. So I'll click on this and click on download. And we have a new web page open and it is downloading. So you can see it's 450 megabytes taking on my computer about three minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video here. Right, well, as you can see, it is just finishing downloading. So I will click on it, or you can open it by clicking on open file or however you open downloads in your web browser. So my antivirus is just scanning it, here we go. So please select the language of the installer. So I'll choose English, United States. So click next to begin. So I'll click next, install this product too. So you may have more than one version of Visual Studio, so make sure you choose the correct version. So I'll click Install, and it says, please close the following processes before continuing the setup. And one of them is DevN. Well, that is the developer engine. In other words, it is the Visual Studio program that we've got here in the background. So I'm going to close Visual Studio and now go back to this installation. So click OK and try install again and see if everything has been closed. But you can see there's still one open, something called Perf Watson 2. So I don't know what Perf Watson 2 is. So I'm going to open up Task Manager. So you can do this by pressing Control, Alt, Delete and opening Task Manager. So here is my version of Task Manager. So make sure you don't have anything open that you don't need open. So I'm going to click on Perf Manager 2. In fact, I think it's now closed. I think it was in here. But wherever it was, you'd click on it and you right and click on it and you would end the task. So let's see if it has now closed. There it's closed. So do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? So I'm going to say yes. 
and now it is loading the packages and is installing the SSIS extension into Visual Studio. So it's just going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to speed up the video until it's finished. Right, well that took about 15 minutes, but all specified components have been installed successfully, but the computer needs to be restarted before setup can continue. So I'm going to restart the computer. Right, well I have rebooted the computer and restarted Visual Studio. So now let's click on continue without code to get to the main screen. And I can now start SSIS by going to file, new project, and you can see right at the top, we have got integration services project. So I would recommend using that unless you want to use the Azure Data Factory, in which case you can use the Azure enabled, but I'm just going to use the standard one. So I'll click on that, click on next, and you can give it a project name if you want. I'm going to keep it as is and a solution name. And you can see a solution is a container for one or more projects. So I'm going to now click create and the container for my SSIS project is now there. So you can see that we've got this package where we can put control flow items in, like for instance, a data flow task. So if I drag that in from the SSIS toolbox, and if you can't see the SSIS toolbox, then you go to view, other windows, SSIS toolbox. It's very important that you've got the SSIS toolbox and not just toolbox, which is used for things like SSRS. So if I add the data flow task into my control flow, I can then double click on the data flow task to get into the data flow. And I can add things such as a source. So if I drag in my source assistant, I will have a SQL server source and I will enter my credentials. So choose a database, click OK. So there is my data source. I can double click on it and give a name of a table as well. I can then do a transformation. For example, maybe I want a row count. So I'll put that in and what's important is that I'm connecting these two together. So this is my data flow. So I've got this row count, which is going to go into a variable. So I will define my variable right, right and clicking on the canvas, going to variables and I'm going to create a new variable. So there is my add variable. So this is going to be my row count. So the number of rows is going to go into this my row count and then I'm going to have a destination assistant so where it is going into so I'm going to go back into the same place but in a different table I need to connect it together before I configure the destination so I'll put it into another table and then I can map it and everything else I need to do to create a flow in SSIS. Well, I hope that this was useful and you can now start creating your own SSIS packages. If you'd like more assistance in how to create them, then I hope you'll consider looking at my Udemy course. So in around three and a half hours, we have a look at extract, transform and load tasks. So we'll be looking at various things such as extracting and loading and transforming and more. So within just a few hours, you can get to grips with creating your own SSIS packages. A link to this course is in the description to this video. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not click like, and then click subscribe and that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.